Let's imagine that I purchased a, uh, a side table from Restoration Hardware, and I put it on my company's American Express card. Well, I need to get that item into our inventory stock glossary so I can sell it to a client in the future. So it's going to be a two-fold process. First, let's get the information added into the inventory glossary itself. And to do so, we're going to click Add. And that brings up our inventory stock item window again, but completely blank. And notice now that I can type into my stock number, of course. So this would be um, a, a side table, so I would put it under my uh, FRN or furniture designator. And the next appropriate series of uh, numbers for my sequential furniture pieces. Style or size, I've been pretty consistent on inputting that information, so I could do so as well. 24 width. Description, 17th century. Ming Dynasty. Side table. Color or finish, I could put that in as well. Plain sanded wood. Storage location, uh, entirely optional. If I do need to designate where I have it located in my physical building, I can do so. But my inventory, again, is quite small. Unit of measure, I would select each. Sales category, I would put under furniture. Now I know exactly what I paid for this piece, so I can use that as my unit uh, estimated cost. 487 is what I put on my American Express. Notice that my markup percentage and point of sale discount are already entered. Well, those are defaults that I've configured at an overall company level, and they can be configured back on our file, company information and settings, inventory, and we can see there's my market percentage and my point of sale discount. So whenever I add new items, those will be defaulted for me. But um, and now with the 50% markup, that calculates a unit sale price of $730.50. I can certainly change that if desired. I might want to sell it for an even $699. And when I exit the unit sale price field, notice that the markup recalculates all the way out to four decimal places for me. Vendor, this is not really necessary in this case because I'm generally buying this as a, a single piece, but I may want to input it just for my records or, or in case I do want to order another one. The catalog number for that piece. Purchase order side mark, again, not really necessary in this case because I don't plan on ordering it again, and neither would the reorder point or reorder quantity be applicable either. Uh, notes, I might want to put in uh, something about the initial purchase of this side table. I could use my date input and then put in initial purchase for future sale, or whatever verbiage I would like. Brad. Picture tab. I can easily associate the image with um, our side table, and to do so, I've already have it pre-configured for sake of time, but I could go out for to my uh, website, here's the restoration hardware, where's a copy of that um, side table, and all I have to do is copy the image and click the paste image from clipboard, and it would put it right in there for me. Now that's a lot of our qualitative information. We have our picture, we have all of our description, etc. But it's really now the stage of entering in our quantitative information. How much did we how many units did we purchase? What was the cost, etc. And that would be entered in on that status adjustment tab as we discussed previously. And since the brand new stock item, obviously all of our totals and costs would be zero. To input that information manually, I have very few options except to use my Add button as indicated by the green plus sign. If I click Add, that gets us to that inventory adjustment window, and I can put in that information. 
How many do I have on hand? Well, I purchased one, and it's in my facility. Out of the on hand, out of the pieces that I do have on hand, how many have I paid for? So I paid for one as well. I know precisely what I paid uh, on my American Express. Again, that was the 487. The project item and component number fields would only be applicable when I'm entering in uh, information pertaining to a committed quantity for the most um, in most cases, and I wouldn't need to enter that in here. The warehouse also conveniently defaulted for me. The warehouse default again is configured on our company information and settings and our inventory default warehouse in the top left corner. If I wanted to indicate that was going to be stored in another of my warehouses, I could make that change as well. Another feature of the inventory adjustment window uh, as a whole is the transfer feature. I can make an inventory adjustment and actually transfer items from my Vita Noma Design main facility over to the North Green Street on this window as well. So if I'm moving pieces between my two locations, I can do that quite easily with the inventory adjustment window where we remove the on-hand quantity from uh, the original warehouse and input it into the transfer to warehouse. Uh, transaction description, entirely optional. I would put something very simple like initial purchase. The adjustment date defaults to today's date, but I could change that to represent the date that I truly purchased it, but this is fine for our example. And if I go ahead and click OK, now I have some cost and totals. So we can see I have one on hand, one paid for, our total cost is entered, my warehouse quantities are updated, and I've created our single adjustment transaction to indicate that I manually entered in that information. Click OK, and we have just added our 17th century uh, Ming Dynasty side table.